It's live on KEXP. We're broadcasting in Seattle at 90.3 FM, worldwide at kexp.org and through our free mobile apps. And live sessions like this one are made possible because of listener support. We're so grateful to have the opportunity to give artists a platform like this, and it's made possible because of donations from people just like you. So thank you. If you'd like to give, you can online easily at kexp.org. And I can't even express just how excited I am to welcome Little Dragon back to the studio today. Thanks for being here. They're in the live room with me and they're gonna play some music for us. So thank you all for being here today. And whenever you're ready, please take it away. Listening to Little Dragon live on KEXP. We're gonna play a song called Lily's Call.
Listening to the beautiful sounds of Little Dragon live on KEXP. We're going to do a little switching around again here. <laughs> it's sounding great. This uh, this next one is called Slugs of Love. Yes. <laughs>
And live on KEXP sounding so good. We have some folks joining us. Oh, yes. Uh, we're so happy we got to meet April plus Vista. They're dear friends of us. Uh, they came to Gothenburg for, for a little trip and we made some music. Uh, we made an EP called Slipping Into Color and we're going to play a song called Slumber. Closer to you, closer to you, 
closer to you, closer to you, closer to you. Fantastic. Little Dragon live here on KEXP with April and Vista doing uh, a guest on that song. Yeah, we're going to play one, uh, one last song called Where You Belong.
Absolutely beautiful sounds of Little Dragon here live on KEXP. Thank you so much for that. It was stunning. Thank you truly. for having us. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so We're happy, happy to be here. I'm glad. And I have to tell you before we start in a, on this conversation, just truly how incredible it is for me to have you here as I've been listening as a fan for almost two decades now. Um, wow. And your music has been really meaningful to me. So I just want to say thank you for that, for making so many great records that, that I love in my life. Wow. Anyway, moving on, now that I've gushed a little. <laughs> so, welcome to Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back. Yeah. It's you good had, to be back. It is, um, despite the rainy weather today. We're from Sweden, so yeah, you we're used it. to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, your, your music is so soulful, and especially on this record, Slugs of Love, I feel like these good poppy beats. It's kind of like, um, imagine walking into a vintage clothing shop, but finding something that's like incredibly in style right now. It's sort of a, a way that I like to think of it. How do you do that? How do you find this balance in your music? Um, cool. We go to a lot of vintage uh, stores. <laughs> no, I, I, th I think it's the, the sum of um, the four of us, like having all different inputs and and liking different stuff and then merging together in a shared vision of uh, madness and yeah. mix. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Madness is good sometimes, especially it's worked out well for your music. Mm -hmm. um, so Slugs of Love, this is your newest album other than the EP that we just heard a track off of. This is your seventh full like full-length album. It's fantastic. One of my favorite albums of the year. Um, and I'm hoping you can tell me a little bit about the creative process, like where your heads were at, where you were making this album, that sort of a thing. I mean, we've been collaborating so much through the years. So I think we're sort of like, I think we felt with that album that we kind of figured it out a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we share a studio together and we meet and we jam out and we experiment with kind of different ways of starting a song. Sometimes we try out the more classic way of songwriting and sometimes it starts with just like a beat. Most of our music actually is, uh, you know, starts with the music and a beat and then vocals and yeah. so, but, but we've experimented a lot um, with each other. Yeah. We had a, a little, we were mind mapping or with colors, we were, uh, we sort of had three <laughs> words, uh, trance, romance, and dance. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. And uh, some, I think those three things have been around us always. I think mm -hmm. we always loved the, the, the romantic vibes and we love to dance, and then we also love to get lost in in and lose sense of time. You can do that in the romantic genre too, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, those <laughs> then were we tried the 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 yes the yes process. The yes process. The yes yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Say yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like trans romance dance. Those are three words I would definitely use to describe Little Dragon. Yeah, oh. It worked nice. out well. It came through in this <laughs> record. So you're all from Sweden, as many people would likely know. And Yukimi, you're Japanese, Swedish, correct? Half American, half, half uh, Japanese, born in Sweden. And born in Sweden, OK. <laughs> so the, the band, obviously, is so unique, unmistakable. It's so cool to hear, really, the way that your sound evolves and changes over time from record to record, but really remains like you. It's, it's unmistakably Little Dragon. So do you find that there's like sounds or inspirations or instruments, anything that help you stay rooted in that sound that you've created for so many years now? I mean, I, I'd draw the comparison to like, um, you know, uh, uh, you, uh, our personalities, mm -hmm. you know, like we change, but sort of there's an essence of who you believe you are that's kind of the same, but still you're not the same person as, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, I, obviously your cells are new, new and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, you still kind of there's a thread there. Right. <laughs> I think I'm still me. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I feel new. Yeah, um, I think that was kind of uh, the feeling that we had between um, for new me, same us. You know, it's mm -hmm. a, you're, you're new in every moment, but it's still kind of 
still us. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. Beautiful answer. I really love that. I was going to ask you if it was just Swedish magic, magic, but like <laughs> that's a better answer than what I was going to ask. All right. So you've been making music together for almost 20 years now or right around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how is your dynamic as a band, the way you collaborate changed? Has it? I know, you write, record and produce all your own music, correct? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So has it, has the collaborative um, vibe changed at all for the band? <laughs> or are you just... I mean, I think co collaboration, it, with it, music is collaboration in a way because, you know, you're communicating <laughs> with your instruments. Um, so we do that a lot when we play live. But also, I mean, we get to practice communicating uh, with our words when we write music yeah. <laughs> mm. as well. And that's, you know, like as every human being knows, it can be easy, it can be challenging mm -hmm. um, to get your ideas across. I think we're all pretty, you know, uh, we have uh, our own taste and our own visions and, you know, we, we kind of like can be stubborn. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's the beauty of the band is that it's it's helped uh, all of our different personalities to, to loosen up in, in our own our own ways. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say that's the beauty of collaboration. You know, you get, get a little bit outside of your own head. Mm. Um, so that's, that's the beauty of being in a band, really, I think. I, you know, whenever I see bands that have been together for this long, I really commend you because it's, it's hard to, to keep friendships like this, especially in a working relationship. I have to imagine that it's not mm. easy. It wouldn't be for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's good to practice the habit of expressing the love for each other mm. also. It can, after all, that's where... Oh, I'm sure we all had this fire as, as young kids <laughs> to be in a band and to be out there and find fans and, and be on stage. You know, it's a bit of a blessing, a spell to have music in your life like that mm -hmm. because you're searching for euphoria always. And, and, uh, but I think we, uh, I think we realized that over the years that we, uh, we, there's still so much to get to know about each other and we can still be very curious about our, your friends, you know, and, mm. and, and, and express and to get deep into your friendship, you kind of have to work on the love bit as well. You can't just focus on we're in a band and it has to keep on working so that we can pay the bills and all, and all of that. Because <laughs> where we started was simply love for music and love for the sound that we made together. So mm. trying to keep that healthy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. <Yeah. laughs> so Slugs of Love has some really cool guest artists like Damon Albarn is on Stay, or I'm sorry, on Glow, and then J.I.D. is on Stay, mm. correct? Mm -hmm. How do you decide who you collaborate with or who you feature on your records? Because you have so, like, so many songs, so many artists you've collaborated with over the years. Is there, do you contact people that they contact you? Tell me more about that. <laughs> I mean, we haven't really, uh, for, for our first albums, we didn't have any guests. Mm -hmm. We were really stubborn there. We were on a lot of other people's albums, but uh -huh. we were like, we're going to keep it clean. <laughs> just be us. But um, I think, uh, yeah, we just kind of wanted to be open-minded and, you know, okay. You know, first we sort of uh, marinated the idea of having a guest. And then all of a sudden you start making music and you hear somebody on a track and you're like, oh, this would suit that person. Mm -hmm. And then you ask and you get a yes or a no, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's kind of how we've uh, done it so well, far. I love those. I love seeing those features on there. They're perfectly done with the album. And mm -hmm. I, okay, I have to ask you this, Yukimi. So I am also a mother. I know you're a mother too. Um, and you've made almost as many albums as a mom than before you were a mom, right? I, th I think I have that correct. Mm -hmm. So how, tell me a little bit about how the, that part of your life um, like influences your creative process. And I'm not sure if any of you are also parents, but I just, you know, as mom to mom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it influenced, um, I think, uh, myself like deeply. Cause I was telling the guys yesterday, I felt like, you know, I was just, we were on a roll uh, with, with sort of trying to being, we were the up and coming and we were catching all the moments and, you know, take it or you lose it kind of mentality. And then when I had my first kid, um, I, ha I had this very like epiphany of like, oh, what's the point of music? Yeah. What's the point? Who, who am I? You know, it was like a real 
psychedelic trip, but <laughs> without the psychedelics. It was like, you know, what's the point? What's the reason? Is music even important for the world? And, you know, sort yeah. of lost my identity and sort of felt like everything was moving so fast and I was moving so slow. Um, and uh, I think it was a really healthy process. I had to sort of um, become my, myself or the, the new person uh, that I was going to be. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's... it's um, it's changed me big mm -hmm. time. And I mean, I think that being a mom for me personally is like the hardest job I've ever <laughs> experienced yeah. in my life. I, I thought it was going to be cozy and nice, but it's definitely <laughs> like uh, testing, you know, testing my personality and all those bits <laughs> on the deepest level. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I, yeah. I understand you 1,000%. <laughs> yes. Well, you've had um, a busy year. You've, uh, you've put out two releases now. You have a sold-out tour across North America. Uh, you've been busy. So tell me, what's, do you have like a, a post-tour ritual? What's the first thing you want to do when you get home mm -hmm. and don't have to worry about this anymore? <laughs> as, as fun and wonderful as it is. It's always a funny contrast leaving this uh, daily chase of euphoria and then you end up in a sofa mm -hmm. with Netflix and uh, <laughs> how do you deal with that? It's like, where, when is the climax of the day coming? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, the, 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 the days on the road are very dynamic. Right. You, you know, it's a build up every day and it's very meaningful and it keeps you on your toes. So yeah, somehow you have to... I think personally... I start by doing the dishes, like humble mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> like we don't have a dishwasher at home, so I'm like, okay, just bring it on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also a, I'm a father of three, so I'm. Mm. A, I just I'm. I feel like I'm the lowest grade of our family. Mom is top, and yes. then there are some kids, and I'm the lowest creature <laughs> of all in our household. But I, I enjoy it. It's it's a. Uh, um, because if I walk into the kitchen like, hey, I'm the drummer of Little Dragon, I don't do dishes, that, that <laughs> it doesn't work out. Uh, so yeah, get, 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 get the taste for reality as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Good. I think that's the ritual. I, I bet it, yeah, I bet it's nice to sleep in your own bed too. I'm oh yeah. That, yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> After the dishes comes the bed. Yeah, and have like a bathroom ready at yeah. your house, you know, yeah. with a shower. And it's not moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. not being jostled as you're, yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for being here. This was really wonderful. It was so nice to see all of you thank live you. and in person. Oh. I hope that you'll come back again soon. Thank, thank you. you so much for thank having you. us. Yeah, it yeah. sounded yeah. really wonderful. And thank you so much to our listeners for you know listening and watching this session. If you want to find more sessions like this one, you can subscribe at KEXP's YouTube channel. These sessions are made possible because of donor support, so thank you so much. And if you would uh, like to support these sessions, you can become a channel member with a monthly contribution by clicking the Join button below this video. And as a channel member, you'll rece receive exclusive access to select live streaming performances of KEXP in studio sessions as a special perk. You can make a donation directly at kexp.org. Thank you for listening today. This has been Little Dragon live on KEXP. Lovely. Thank you so much. Discover new music at listener-powered kexp.org.